Uh, and that's the kind of baseball he played where he would torment the pitcher. Where he would get a look like that on his face, and then the pitcher would either drop the ball or stop paying attention to the batter and give the batter something to hit. That's how Robinson affected uh, the opposition. On September 23rd, 1947, they have Jackie Robinson Day at Ebbets Field, where they award him a car and they honor the success he had that year. He was named Rookie of the Year in 1947, the first ever in Major League Baseball history. They gave him the award 18 days before the season ended. Now they vote on it in November. That's him with the award. This was how he did that year. Scored a team high 125 runs. He also led the team in home runs, tied with Pee Wee Reese. Led the team in hits runs, and he tied for leading home runs. Where he really turned around his season was in early June, where he had a 21 game hitting streak, and over those 28 games batted 389 with 27 runs scored. And first ever rookie of the year, Dodgers finished 94 and 60, winning the National League, and they played the Yankees in a World Series. 1947 World Series was one of the greatest World Series ever. A couple things that happened during that series. In game four, there was a Yankee pitcher called Bill Bevins, who came within one out of being the first pitcher to throw a no-hitter. He walked 10 guys, but he almost had the first no-hitter. Dodgers were losing two to one in the bottom of the ninth. They got two runners on base. A pitch hitter called Cookie Lavagetto hits one into the gap. Both Dodgers score, they went up winning game four, three to two. Series is tied at 2-2 going to game five in Brooklyn, the Dodgers lose. In game six, they go back to Yankee Stadium. A uh, reserve outfielder called Al John Frito robs Joe DiMaggio in one of the greatest defensive plays ever in World Series history. Stops the Yankee rally and forces game seven. Dodgers lose in, in game seven. However, losing to the Yankees was something the Dodgers did. 1947, they made the World Series and play, play the Yankees. Before that year, they had only made three World Series. One of them came in 1941. They lost to the Yankees in five games. They went up playing the Yankees in 1949 in the World Series. In 1952, 53, 55, and 56. They only won one. Okay? The Dodgers' success over that time, 47, they win the division or win the National League. 48, they, they qualified for a playoff, won a losing to Boston in the playoff. 49, they won their league again. 1950, they lost on the last day of the season to the Phillies. 1951, they blew a 14-game lead. Bobby Thompson hit the shot hole around the world where the Giants came back and beat them in a three-game playoff, so they didn't make the playoff that year. 52, they won a franchise record 104 games, lost to the Yankees in the World Series. 53, won 100 games, lost to the Yankees in the World Series. 54, the Giants wound up winning the National League, but again, wound up winning in 55 and 56. So they had great success with Jackie Robinson, and the Dodgers became known as the Boys of Summer. Um, and this was kind of how Robinson fit into that in 1947, being a team leader in some of those other categories. 1949, Robinson wound up winning MVP. The only year he wound up winning MVP uh, in his major league career. This is kind of the effect he had overall in his career. If you look at in Brooklyn Dodger history, most hits from a right-handed batter. One year, Jackie Robinson holds the record, 203. Now, this is Brooklyn Dodger history. Most seasons scoring 99 runs or more. This is total Dodger history, including Los Angeles. Robinson has seven seasons scoring 99 runs or more, more than any other Dodger player in team history. More than Duke Snyder, more than Jim Gilliam, more than Gil Hodges, more than the players like Steve Garvey or Reggie Smith or Steve Sachs or whoever played for the Dodgers later on in their, uh, in their time in Los Angeles. Robinson is a guy that has done that more than anybody. So most runs scored. This is from 1947 to 1953. The only one that scored more runs than him in Major League Baseball was Stan Musial, a Hall of Famer. Most hits over that time period. The only one uh, that had more hits than him over that time period was, again, Stan Musial. So this is how Jackie Robinson, how good he was. Some of his numbers now, when they add the secondary information that they do now with all these different calculations and new statistics, he ranks better.
I had a category called war, which is winds above replacement, which I could explain, but I probably bored you to death. Um, Robinson Mike Schneer, one of the best, and the best at his position, second base. Overall, how did he affect Major League Baseball? The National League was a lot more open to giving roster spots to black players, not only black players, but um, Puerto Rican players, Spanish players. They integrated a lot faster than the American League was. From 1960 to 1985, in the All-Star Game, the National League only lost three times. They went up winning 24, losing three with one tie. That's because they had guys like Ken Garrett, Frank Robinson, Roberto Clemente, Willie McCovey, um, Juan Marichal. A lot of the guys that the National League gave the chance, uh, Joe Morgan, uh, and, and wind up breaking uh, and, and being a main difference in why they dominated Major League Baseball over that time period. If you ask some of the players, hey, hey, Garen, obviously wound up being one of the greatest players ever, but had 3,700 hits in his career. Uh, plenty of teams could have signed Hank Aaron. Plenty of teams could have signed Willie Mays. He had a trial with the Red Sox. They didn't want to sign him. Red Sox were the last team to integrate in 1959. Um, and they were a American team. So this is overall the effect that Jackie Robinson had on Major League Baseball. This is him with his family, uh, him and his kids, and Rachel. Uh, and that's him with Richard Nixon and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, after his career was over, he wound up getting into politics. Um, I'm dying in 1972 after making a speech at the World Series where he said, the only thing that's missing is seeing a black manager. Um, Jack, uh, Frank Robinson was up being named first black manager a couple of years later as a player manager. The guy Robinson had a lot of respect for and was another one of those guys who got his shot in the National League coming in with Cincinnati. So Robinson saw, oversaw a lot of these things, the changes that would be made but because he had diabetes and because of all the stress that he put himself through, he ended up dying at a young age in 1952, uh, excuse me, in 1972. So I, I would have loved to have seen what Robinson could have done with 20 more years on this earth um, and some of the things he could affect. Um, but overall, he was a guy that saw things for how they were, wanted to improve them, but knew the reality of it was going to be a lot different than how it would look. Uh, and integrating baseball was one of those things. Behind the scenes, there were a lot of things he suffered from that he couldn't show, he couldn't let know, that he had to hold in. But the kind of character that's really developed when no one is looking, or when everyone is looking, is that you make the right choice. And he always did.